This is part 17 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss self-referencing association entity framework with code-first approach. This is continuation to part 16. In part 16, we discussed self-referencing association with database-first approach. In this video, we'll be modifying the example that we worked with in part 16. So please watch part 16 before proceeding. Now, Based on this employee class, we want the entity framework to be able to generate this employees table. Look at the names of the columns that we have got here. Employee ID, employee name, manager ID. Employee ID is the primary key column and manager ID is the foreign key column. Now, to get the manager of a given employee, we take the manager ID column value and look up that value in the employee ID column of the same table. So this is a self-referencing employees table and we want the entity framework to be able to generate this self-referencing table based on this employee class. And that's the reason why we have these three scalar properties with the same name as that of these column names. So employee ID, employee name, manager ID. And in addition to these scalar properties, we also have this manager navigation property. Look at what this property is returning, employee. That's because the manager of an employee is also an employee. And for the entity framework to be able to generate this self-referencing employees table based on this employee class, we need to override on model creating method. And this is where we programmatically specify the self-referencing association. Before we examine the code that we have here, let's look at the example that we worked with in part 16. Now, we were able to generate the self-referencing employee entity based on the database table. Okay, and if you look at this entity, we have got two navigation properties here. One is called subordinates. And if you look at the properties of this navigation property, notice the multiplicity here is many. Okay, now if you look at the manager navigation property, the multiplicity is zero or one because for a given employee, there may be, you know, at the max one manager or no manager at all. For example, if the employee is the CEO or the chairman of the company, then he has no manager. For the rest of the employees, there will be at the max one manager. Okay, so we have zero or one multiplicity there. And to achieve that zero or one multiplicity, look at that, we are using this has optional method and we are saying e dot manager, you know, that navigation property. But whereas, you know, a manager can have many direct reports who are employees. So this is the other end of the relationship where we have the many multiplicity. Okay, so this method here is going to specify zero or one uh, multiplicity. This method is going to specify the many multiplicity. And we want the manager ID property to be the foreign key. So we are specifying that using has foreign key. It's that simple. And we want all this to be affected on employee entity. Okay, so let's look at this in action. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous session. We don't need this employee model anymore, which we have generated from the database. So let's delete that. And from the web.config file, we can get rid of this connection string. And to this project, let's go ahead and add a class file. And let's name it employee.cs. And this class is going to have the properties that we have seen on the slide. And to speed things up, I have already typed the required code. So let's copy these property names and paste them within this employee class. And let's add another class file to this project. And let's call this employee db context.cs and we want system.data.entity namespace and let's make this class inherit from the db context class and this class is going to have a public property which is going to return db set of employee and let's call the property employees. And we want to override on model creating method. And this is where we paste the code that we have seen on the slide. So this is the code that specifies the self-referencing association programmatically. And one last thing that we need to do is within the web.config file, we need to specify the connection string. So let's go ahead and specify that. All right. 
Now, if you look at the database here, we already have the sample database and the employees table within that. So let's go ahead and delete the sample database. And now, when we run this web form one, uh, we should have the sample database and employees table created. Now, within the previous session, we discussed this code. You know, this code is basically going to display the names of the employees and their respective manager names. So the ASPX and its code behind file is not going to change in any way. So let's go ahead and run this. So it should automatically create the sample database and we should also get that employees table created. So the web form is still loading. So it's trying to create the sample database and employees table. So it's done. Now let's come here and refresh the databases folder and notice that we have got the sample database and within that we have got the employees table and if you look at the columns we have got employee id employee name manager id employee id is the primary key column manager id is the foreign key column now at the moment this table will not have any data that's the reason why it's not displaying anything on the web form so let's execute this insert script so it should have inserted some data there Let's reload this web form and notice that we get the same output. In this video, we have seen how to achieve self-referencing association with code-first approach. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.